Hey guys, it's me Queen and today I'm going to be doing a story time on how we saved my mum's skirt and my mum's life. Alright, so we're going to go back, well I don't know when I'm uploading this but as I'm filming it's the 1st of April. So we're going to go back say a couple of days when my mum went out and to do like her animals and I stayed home and she didn't tell me like she just told me to check on the go on the goats um once or twice just to make sure that they were like behaving and because it was a rainy day and that make sure like they could they didn't get tanked up she didn't say anything about making sure they weren't eating anything or anything because the other day they had gone into rhododendron, which is poisonous to goats, but they had survived. And she had said she looked through that spot and like there was nothing, so I didn't have to worry. So we didn't. I didn't worry. I just went about my day and I checked on them a couple of times and they're fine. And my mum was going to come home around 9 o'clock um, from what she was doing. And so she's like, if I'm not back, can you put them away at around 7? So it was 6.50 and like my dog was barking. And I was like, uh, okay, I'll just go out and do it now. He was tangled up, so I untangled him and I grabbed the girls and their leads. And I went and put them in the shed because I wanted to like staying at someone's house while I'm filming this. And while we're doing this, and um, they're staying in the chicken shed at night time just to get out of the weather. While their, um, their, the billy goat is sleeping in the same run as my dog. Because it's like a quite large, like, calf pen. And then my goat that I'm trying to tame is actually just running loose in the paddock. Um, with the, with the meat calves. Um, and, well, to, like, yeah, you know what I mean, like, to, for when they're older, we're, like, just feeding them up to when they're older, so that we can, like, yeah, so they can make, make cows. And, I was, like, they seemed fine, like, they weren't bloated or anything, I was like, okay, because, like, I, I was, like, just being, like, hmm, okay, so I just put them in their run, and I, like, took the leads off, and I shut the door, and... I guess I should have realised straight away that they were, that especially Amara, who was the oldest, wasn't trying to push past me. Like, Snow was, but Amara wasn't. She was just, like, she just would lay down, which is unusual. They don't like going to bed. You know, they want to be out with Rocky and, like, they want to be with Snug. Especially since Snow was, it just has, is in her, was in her first heat. It was her first heat and Amara had just come out of heat so I guess I didn't I didn't think of it much at that point and I just went came back inside and went about my day my mum went in to feed came home and went out to feed them and I'm like okay sweet as I'm just sitting on the couch writing because I'm writing a book at the moment and the next thing I know my mum's coming in and she's like because she kept saying like oh come outside and come outside and I'm like no 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 like I've did that earlier for you like I'm not coming outside to help you feed the goats um, and she goes, I need your help. And I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, Amara's dying. Amara's literally dying. And my adrenaline had kicked in. I'm like, what? And she goes, she's vomiting green everywhere. She wouldn't drink her bottle. Snow drank her bottle. So when we went out there, apparently Snow was screaming and Amara was screaming in pain. And it was just like this big thing. And I had a cold thing. And I get really sick around anything that was vomiting. So seeing that green vomit, I was like, uh, like I was trying not to, I was getting heat flashes, I was shaking, I felt like I was going to vomit but I was like stuck through it and we like, we made up like a tea mixing that's meant to neutralize the toxins in the body and at the thought, we didn't know what she had gone into um, that was poisonous so we went and we shoved that down her throat and she didn't really want to drink it on the bottle which was scary and we tried putting in um, activated charcoal because that also builds up the layers of the stomach for a goat and that did not work um, she would not take it down and she kept it was just making her vomit more 
So we tried like, we didn't know what else to do. We couldn't get it down her throat. We even took like the lid off the bottle, like the like nipple, and we're trying to show it down her throat that way. She was just vomiting. She did not take it. She was stressing out. So we had to, we were saying, actually she said like a cow shed. So we ran down there, got a syringe, and we came back and we like got, like we like put it in and we gave it to her. And she it just made her vomit more. And then we put activated charcoal actually on the syringes um, thing where the stuff comes out. And wish and as mum was being very careful not to, like she had to pin her up in a corner and like do it. And I'm like sitting here with the torch like freaking out. But she took the activated charcoal and that down. And we went ahead and looked what she it was eating. And in that area there was deadly nightshade. And well, there's nightshade which everyone should know was deadly. But when we searched up on the internet, we found out that apparently goats can have that shade. But there was a plant we couldn't work out what it was, and it has this, it causes the same reaction as rhododendron in a goat. Um, and we're like, oh my god! Like when we she mum saw the picture, she's like, oh my god! They need less than um one percent of their body weight to eat it that can kill them, and. She ate a she ate a mouthful. You can see like literally on the bush where she ate, and that's about one percent of her body weight. And we're freaking out. We went out every two hours to go and shove more of this solution down her throat that we had. Um, and we were freaking out. It was like. And I went to sleep and then I woke up and I just had this feeling like something was wrong. And I thought she was dead. And no, the goat, um, my mum had taken her to the vets. And the vets had given her, not Anlam. I don't think it's Anlam anywhere. It was some sort of painkiller. Her heart rate was fine, but she had what looked like um, the starts of pneumonia from, she's obviously like swallowed some of her own vomit into her lungs. So they were putting her on antibiotics and all this other stuff and let me tell you the, the vomiting in goats is very rare like it doesn't happen very often unless something's really wrong um I, we don't know if it's just her body instinct kicking in or if it's actually the poison with the toxins but we she had to stay that night so that was night two because it was night time when the first thing happened and then the next day we went and picked her up and she was amazing like, and we know she probably would not have survived if it wasn't for what we had done. Because if without that, the toxins would have built up in her system too much and killed her. What we were basically doing was neutralizing the toxins and building up layers in her, like, stomach wall so that she couldn't absorb any more toxins. And we also did, like, I think it was olive oil or something, which actually is another line of protection. So we saved a nice life. Thank you guys for watching this story time and I'll see you guys later. Bye. I can't reach.